Well, welcome, everybody. Um, we're so glad that you can join us tonight for this um, training webinar, getting ready for our trip to Washington, D.C., to advocate for federal funds for NF research, which is a program that is really important to all of us. Um, just give me a minute here so I can get my screen showing. There it is. There it is. So the program that we're going to talk about today is the NF Network Advocacy Program. There we go. So and the, the NF Network, um, for some of you, I know that there's several of you who are um, new to us that are on the webinar tonight. So I want to just give you a little bit of history of who the NF Network is. Um, we were founded back in 1988 um, as Neurofibromatosis Inc. We were originally a part of the um, Neurofibromatosis um, Foundation Group. It was put together by regionally independent organizations. So at that time they created a national organization that serves as an umbrella to facilitate coordination on national activities um, and of shared resources. So the program we're talking about today is one of the prime reasons for that so that we come together as all of these different local member organizations and individuals at large and work on um, our national program, which is advocating for federal funds for NF research. The reason for this um, was to allow autonomies um, for the individual re regional organizations to serve the members in the way that they wanted to um, in their own states. And our mission is to find treatments and a cure for neurofibromatosis by providing, promoting scientific research, improving clinical care, providing outreach through education and awareness, while offering hope and support to those affected by NF. So our tagline is Leading NF Advocacy and Building NF Community. We're founded on three different pillars, promoting NF research, building the NF community, and funding our missions. And in promoting NF research, this is the program that we're talking about tonight, um, our advocacy program. We are also active um, in scientific and medical meetings and conferences. Um, we provide C grants to NF researchers, and we um, encourage our patients to participate in clinical trials, or at least we make them aware of them. Um, in building in a community, we do um, educational meetings. So we do them across the country. Um, we do support gatherings, some of them called NF Chats you'll hear about around the country. Uh, we uh, produce educational materials for our member organizations and individuals who reach out to us directly um, to help them get the information that they need for the support that they um, need to have dealing with the diagnosis of NF, and we provide referrals to NF clinics. In order to be able to do all these services, we have different fundraisers. We have a walk program. We have a concert program called NF Hope. Um, and then we get support from our regional and state organizations. And then these are the groups that um, fall underneath the NF Network umbrella, um, NF Northeast, NF Central Plains, NF Arizona or Southwest, NF Northwest, NF Michigan, NF North Central, and NF California. And then the areas that are not serviced by um, uh, one of these member organizations, then the national organization services these people until such time that we can get an organization in that area. And then I'll go through these slides pretty quick for you so that you can see that these groups are each quite um, unique. Um, this is NF Northeast. They serve Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire, New York, Vermont, and Rhode Island. And um, Andre, I see that you're on there. Are you, there's your dad. <laughs> this group here is, um, this is a little bit of an older picture. These are some of the founding members. Robert Wilson was part of the very beginning, and then Karen Peluso and I, um, back from 1996. And that's um, Central Plains, serving Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado, and Oklahoma. They're doing um, one of our, the WALK programs, and they're having a, an educational meeting there with Dr. Gutman. And as California, they have educational meetings. Um, they have a WALK program, and they have a really great um, Huntington Beach uh, picnic barbecue every year. Uh, NF Arizona, serving Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming. Um, 
and they ran a camp for a number of years down there. In NF Michigan, you can see educational meetings, walk programs going on there as well. In NF Northeast, serving Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. So a little bit about our grassroots efforts here to promote some federal funds for NF research. We started in 1996 and have successfully advocated for over $300 million through the Army's NF Research Program. You'll hear that being called tonight the Army's NF Research Program. Sometimes you'll hear it being said as the CDMRP um, program for NF, and sometimes you hear it as NFRP. Um, but we're talking about the same program here, the Army's NF Research Program, because it's funded through the Department of Defense. So that's our first request every year, is for funding for that program. And our second request is always going to be for support language for NF research through the National Institutes of Health. And then on this slide, you'll see a picture over here of John Mann um, with his beautiful um, daughters there. Um, and he is our mentor coordinator. So for those of you who are new and haven't been with us to the Hill, John will be reaching out to all of you and um, talking to you about partnering you up with a mentor for your um, first visits. And those of you, a couple of you are on um, tonight too for a refresher course, if that's something that you would like to have, if you would like to have a mentor assigned for just one or two meetings or for the whole time, please don't hesitate to give us an email. We'd be glad to get you set up. Um, and this was our group from last year. We had over 70 individuals um, on the Hill with us. We had scheduled 240 congressional meetings in two days. We were we represented 38 different states. Um, this is a really passionate, dedicated group of hardworking people. They had 240 meetings that were scheduled, but they also did drop-in meetings. And I, Katie, I know you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that was probably over 100 um, easily drop-in meetings um, that these individuals did. That means that they had um, information. They didn't have a meeting, but they went and visited um, other congressional offices from their state and educated them um, about our request. And I really love this picture, because if you look in the middle, that's Melanie Leach from Florida, and that's her son, Zach, who has NF. And we didn't plan that, but Zach just decided to give his mom a kiss. Um, and that's really heartwarming, because that's exactly why she's there. She's, for, she's there for her son, Zach. All right, now I'd like to switch it over to you, Katie. Um, Katie is our representative with Van Squag Associates. She's been working with us, we were just talking about it before, for a really long time. Um, and Katie's been an excellent guide for us um, in monitoring and helping us navigate um, the climate there in D.C. so that we've been able to be successful with this funding. Welcome, Katie. Great, thank you. Want to go to the next slide? Yeah, it's not going. Let me try it if I do that. <laughs> okay, now I got it. Okay, first uh, I'll just talk a little bit about, and Kim kind of covered this, but how NF research is funded. So it's, um, it's uh, funded through several institutes at the National Institutes of Health and through the Department of Defense through the Congressionally Directed Medical Research Program. Next slide. Um, this will give you a little bit of an idea about the um, kind of timeline each year for the appropriations process where we um, go through and request funding for NF research. Um, so like I said before, each year we're requesting um, uh, report language, what they call report language, encouraging institutes at the National Institutes of Health to fund NF or to do NF research. And then we're also requesting a specific amount of, of funding at the Department of Defense. So we go to the Hill in February. Um, that, uh, January, February is the time frame where everybody, um, offices are accepting requests and it's important to talk to offices and get the necessary paperwork, which I can discuss later, um, into those offices, educate them about the program, um, what, you know, what the Army's program is, and, um, and we, we do a, a letter each year, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, that's sort of the February, March time frame. Um, then in April, they typically will uh, 
consider consider the bills. Usually in the summertime is when the subcommittees will um, write the, the various bills, the defense bill and the labor, health and human services bill are the two bills that we care about. Um, traditionally in years past, it hasn't been until the, the fiscal year is, is over at the end of September, September 30th, but um, typically Congress will pass a continuing resolution to fund the government. And typically we have to wait until the end of the year to find out what the final funding level for NF is. Um, this year they're moving a little bit faster and we actually may have a defense bill before the end of the fiscal year. But this timeline kind of shows you um, what, what has been the trend over the last several years. Next slide. So for fiscal year 2020, which is what we'll be advocating for in February, um, we will be looking to um, support funding for the Army's NF research program, which is one of what they call the congressionally directed medical research programs, which just means that Congress, um, the president doesn't request funding for the program in his budget. Congress always um, puts the money in their budget and then um, that's how we get funded. Um, and then within the Labor, Health, and Human Services Appropriations Bill, that's where we try to get the um, report language that, that talks about some of the research that's being done on, a, on, an NF, on NF and what we are encouraging various institutes to specifically look into and study. Next slide. Um, dear colleague letters. So these are letters that are um, written by members of Congress and they send them around to all of their colleagues um, in the House and in the Senate and try to get as many members to sign on to them as possible. This was how we make our formal requests to the various subcommittees. Um, so in order to show support for the NF program, these letters are sent to the House and, and Senate Defense and Labor, Health and Human Services Appropriations Subcommittee each year. Um, in the Senate, Senator Ed Markey from Massachusetts has traditionally been the person who has led our letter. And then in the House, um, for a long time, we had um, Representative Gutierrez from Illinois, but he is retiring at the end of this Congress. So we're currently looking to identify a new Democratic lead for the House. And then in the past, we've had Representative um, Grossman from um, Wisconsin, who's been the Republican on the letter. Um, and the goal is to get as many members of Congress to sign the letter showing support as possible. Next slide. And here you can see from the fiscal year 2019 uh, bill, which is what Congress is considering now, um, you can see that in the House, we had 131 members sign the letter, which is actually, I believe, the most, um, the most members we've had in the House sign the letter. Um, and you can uh, look through this list and also on the next slide, and you can see if you're a member of Congress signed and um, use this sort of as a reference for who we can go after in, in 2020, but of course there is not a limit. We want to try to get as many members as possible. So this is just sort of so you can have a guide to see who has signed in the past. Um, and I think the next slide is the Senate members. You can see we had 19 signatures on the Senate letter in fiscal year 2019, um, which was also the most uh, signatures that we had had on the Senate letter. The next slide. So now I want to get into a little bit about um, how you structure your meeting uh, on the on Capitol Hill. So this is a little bit of an outline, and we'll kind of break it down, and I'll uh, tell you a little bit more about each step. But you'll go with an introduction, explaining NF, the impact, um, explain NF research, the re explain the NF research program, and how the NF research program and NIH complement each other. Um, next slide. So first with the introduction, you need to, first of all, thank them for taking the time to meet with you. Make sure you tell them your name and where you're from and that you're representing the NF Network Patient Advocacy Organization. Um, explain what NF is, um, you know, just simple things like that it's highly variable, a neurological genetic condition, causing tumor growth, and, um, you know, just some general things about NF. Um, make sure you point out that it can cause symptoms ranging from severe pain, et cetera. Um, and then currently there are no ways to predict where and when tumors will grow. Uh, next slide. 
Um, next, it's important to make sure that you tell your personal story. It's always better if you can make it personal for them. Um, they're going to respond better if you can explain to them that, you know, you're a constituent and that you, this is how, you know, this is how you're dealing with this and this is why it's important for, for them to fund NF research. And also because we're, um, we get funding through the Department of Defense, it's really important to explain what the military benefit is of this research. Um, and we will provide um, information for you all that, that does, just does do this so that you are able to make this um, clear to the, to the staff. You don't have to just come up with it. Um, and then also make sure you explain how NF impacts either the member's State or their specific district. Um, if there are research institutions in in the state, make sure you talk about funding um, re research that is going on at those institutions. Um, talk about families in in their district or state that are affected. Um, it, it's very important to make it make it local. Make, make them understand how the, the the money is is impacting their specific state. Next slide. We're having a little trouble, Katie. Um, Sidor, I don't think um, Mr. Sidor is able to hear. Okay. Alexandra, um, let's see. So another audio pin has just been sent to you, so go ahead and give it that a try. Okay, go ahead, Katie. Okay. Um, so the next thing um, we want to talk about is um, explaining what the NF research program is. So this is the Department of Defense program. Um, it was established in 1996. It's one of the congressionally directed medical research programs. Most staff, if you say it's a part one of the CDMRP programs, they'll know what, they, what you're talking about. Um, uh, you know, talk about how the NFRP is an efficiently run national program that offers awards through a competitive peer-reviewed process. Um, it fills gaps in ongoing research, complementing initiatives that are sponsored by other agencies, such as the National Institutes of Health. Um, the NFRP has participation from NF researchers, NIH, and from NF-affected individuals. And, the, um, and then there's a, a clinical, NF clinical trial consortium funded through the DOD program. Um, so that's also important. And also, if there's a, an institution in your state that's getting some of this clinical trials um, consortium money, that's always nice to, to be able to point out as well. And we also are, will provide you with a um, state breakout of the defense funding so you can point to how much money of the defense money over the years has gone to your specific state um, when you go into the meetings. Uh, next slide. Hello? Can you see Katie? Yeah. Okay. Can you advance the slide? Yeah, um, so I have. You can't see it on your screen, Katie? No. All right. Oh. You got it now, Katie? Okay. Um, Yes, I do. Okay, so um, next is it's a good thing to talk about maybe a success story. Um, for example, you can use the MEC inhibitor clinical trial success with plexiform tumors um, that is funded through the NF Clinical Trials Consortium. And again, we will provide you with information so you're able to speak to that. Um, or if there's something else, uh, an example that you have that maybe um, your family has participated in a trial or something that um, was successful, that's also good to share. Um, and another thing is that NF research at the National Institutes of Health complements research at the NFRP. Um, we want to make sure that people understand that even though there's research done at both, it's not duplicative, that they are, um, that research is complementary. Um, the NF research at NIH has um, increased proportionately to the funding for the NFRP and, um, and then NFRP funds cutting edge higher risk research projects. Um, that a lot of times researchers will then be, go, be able to go on and, and um, get funding from NIH. Um, and then also the NIH does a trans-NIH NF meeting each year. Um, actually, I'm not sure if it's, it's yearly, but they, they do them to collaborate on research um, at the different institutes. Um, next slide. 
So in summary, for fiscal year 2020, we'll be seeking um, $15 million, which is what we've been supported, uh, funded at for the last several years through the Defense Appropriations Bill for the Army's NF Research Program. For the Labor, Health, and Human, Human Services Bill, we'll be requesting report language on NF Research at the National Institutes of Health to be included in the Labor, um, Health, and Human Services Bill. We'll be circulating a Dear Colleague letter um, in both the House and the Senate, so you'll be able to ask the staffer uh, um, if they will be willing to sign on, their member will be willing to sign on to the letter, but um, a lot of times the letter isn't circulating yet when we have our meetings, so you'll be able to tell the staffer that you'll be in touch with them once the letter starts circulating, and it's a, it's a good uh, reason to be able to follow up with the staffer. And then you can ask the office for their support by submitting these requests to the, to the Defense Appropriations Subcommittee and the Labor, Health, and Human uh, Services Appropriations Subcommittee. Uh, next slide. Some important point, uh, points I wanted to make was to make sure that you make it local. Uh, you're a constituent, so make sure that, that they understand that this is something that's affecting their state. Uh, make it personal. Tell your story. Um, don't be afraid to tell it. That's, that's one of the important, important things is to make it personal. Um, remember to ask for support. Don't assume that they're, they're going to be willing to help you. You need to ask for what you want. Um, you're likely to meet with staff and not the member, so don't be surprised. And the staff are the ones who are doing all the work behind the scenes and are, who are giving all of the information to the members. So um, it's actually not a bad thing to meet with staff. Um, be flexible. Your meeting could end up in the hallway or it could be um, very brief. It could be just 15 minutes. It could be while the member or staff is walking to a hearing. Um, they, if the member wants, is able to step out of a hearing, it might be very brief, and then you'll continue with staff. So you just have to be flexible and um, just kind of just kind of go with whatever is thrown your way. Uh, next slide. Um, some do's and don'ts. Do arrive on time. Um, if you know you're going to be late, uh, you'll have the phone number for the office, so make sure you call and let them know you're on your way. Um, do begin by thanking the legislator staff for meeting with you. Uh, state that you're a constitu constituent or your, um, or your relationship with that state. Do keep your message short, relevant, and to the point. Designate a spokesperson. Make sure that you ask. Don't just go over your points. Ask your members to take action on your behalf. Do justify your request, but don't overwhelm the staff with too much information. Do leave the suggested letters and, letters and fact sheets that we will provide to you to, so you have um, for each office. We'll give you a folder for each office. Um, do thank them, and we will um, provide a template for you to use um, to, send, to follow up with staff, and then do follow up. Next slide. So then I'm going to focus on the follow up now. Make sure you get a business card from the staffer during your meeting so that you can contact them directly. It's better um, if you're able to follow up with that staffer directly than just to an open mailbox with the office because you want to build a relationship with that staff uh, member because they're the ones who are going to advocate for, for your program with their member of Congress. Um, right after the meeting, make sure you jot, jot down any questions that were raised or your impressions from the office about the, um, you know, the member or the staff, just anything that will help you remember that particular meeting. Um, then follow up your visit with a personal letter. Um, an email is always best for staff. They get so they have so much to do that just email seems to be the best way. Um, send, a no, send a note directly to the staff or, as I said, um, use this as an opportunity to establish an ongoing relationship. Um, track your correspondence. Um, your meeting schedule is going to be sent to you in Excel, so you're able to kind of sort it however you want and create columns or whatever, so that can be used to try, use to add your notes. Next slide. Then I'll so take I think, it. Um, okay, go, go ahead. ahead, Katie. Oh, I was just going to reiterate that we will be providing you with um, folders with some of this information that Kim is going to go over um, before the, to leave behind in each office that you have a meeting with and m m maybe offices that you don't have meetings with in your state. And then also we'll be providing you, which Kim is going to go over at the end, but um, a presentation that you can reference during your meeting so that you don't have to just come up with everything off the top of your head.
Thank you, Katie. I'll be glad to go over the tools. One of the things I just wanted to maybe uh, clarify, so when when we get to um, Washington, D.C., Katie and her staff make all these meetings for us. So you will actually get a schedule that has meetings, and those meetings are scheduled about a half an hour apart. That's how we make all these meetings. So your meeting is about 20 minutes, and you just give a few minutes, you know, to get then to the next meeting for that, that next presentation. But, and one of the points that Katie had mentioned earlier, too, is to designate a spokesperson. That doesn't mean that only one person can handle the meeting, but you can kind of divide it up, you know, so different people cover different um, areas in the meeting, but one person should definitely be the lead um, on the meeting. Now, this tool that we have um, that's up for you right now is we are calling it the, the NF fact sheet. Um, it can be an easy way to describe NF. NF is so variable, it's kind of complicated, but when you add the faces, you can kind of look in here and talk about these individuals and the complications that they have and kind of give, an, um, give a staff or a member an idea of what NF is. Then on the left column here, it goes into all the details about what NF is. Then on the right column where it says NF Research Program, it really talks about the things that Katie just went over with you about, you know, that we have the, um, the Army's NF Research Program and we have the research being done at NIH and, and Congress always likes to hear about how they collaborate with one another. So that's um, going to be on the right side. And then on the bottom here where it says what we're seeking, um, and this is the, the document that we used last year, so this will be updated for you. This is our request these two um, statements down here for the CDMRP um, and for the Labor um, Health and Human Services Appropriations Request for the NIH Committee Language on NF. Then an, another tool that we use is our military benefits um, statement. So since we're funded to the Department of Defense, it's become really important for us to make that connection um, between the research that's done on NF and how that can um, benefit the warfighter. And so we do have someone who goes through the research for us and gets the um, appropriate projects, and we put together this military benefit statement so that that is left in each one of the offices that we have meetings in it. And if you look here on the left, we, the research that is funded um, that covers pain management, bone repair, psychosocial, cognitive, uh, nerve tumor repair, vascular disease, and wound healing, um, those are the, the topics that are going to be included in there and will be left behind in the offices. So um, one of the areas that I'd like to just point out is if you go to the NF Network site and you go to the one, two, third one over, it says advocacy on there, then you'll be able to find um, more, we have a toolkit and more information on that that I'll show you in just a minute. But once the Dear Colleague letters are out and we're saying to you, now it's time to reach out to your family and friends um, to ask them to write an email Congress and ask them for support um, of these programs that we were there asking for help with, you can go right to the home page right here where it says Learn More. That button right there will take them right to what we want them to do and it'll look like this. Some of you have done this before, you know exactly what it's going to be. But we have all the information loaded in that goes to the House, that goes to the Senate. Individuals just need to fill, we'll see out where it says number two, it says sender information. They just need to fill out that bottom piece with their name and address and click send and off it goes to the right Senate and office houses for them. Then I wanted to go back to that toolkit. So if you click on advocacy there, you come and you land on this page and then here where it says toolkit. Those documents um, that we talked about and others that you may find helpful are listed under the toolkit and then this webinar that we're doing tonight will also be loaded down underneath there if you want to see it again and for those who aren't able to join us tonight, they'll be able to go there and um, hear the webinar from this evening. And then I want to talk about a little bit of a schedule for us. This will obviously get filled in in more detail as we um, get closer. But on Sunday, we like to um, get to the hotel, um, then downstairs in the lobby, that could get changed. We'll see, it, 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 it probably will. It'll probably be picked up at the, your photos will probably get picked up at the Van Scoia office. Um, we get to the office there between 6.30, around 6.30 um, to 7, we do a greeting. You get your folders, um, and then we have dinner. 
um, they're at the offices, and then we have a spokesperson from the National Institutes of Health come and talk to us about the research that's being done um, there. And then the next morning, we gather in the lobby, we walk over to Capitol Hill, take our picture there, um, and then we will have a meeting space. Last year, it was on the uh, House side. We're trying again to get on the House side, the meeting space. And then we have Ed and Katie go over strategies with us in the morning, things that we can expect to hear when we're on the Hill. And then Naba Bora from the CDMRP and a research program, he comes and talks about that program. So you're going to be really well familiar with the facts and, and things that are happening within that program so that you can um, answer questions um, that may arise. Oh, and another point that Katie always mentions, and maybe you did, Katie, and I missed it, but you know, when you get a question from Congress, Never, it's always best, um, if you've got the answer, give it to them. But if you're not sure, it's a good way to follow up. Just say, I'll, I'll get back to you on that and reach out to us and we'll get the answer for you, um, even if it means we don't know, but we will get an answer for you so that you can get back um, to the Congress, the Congress office. So one of the things I'd like to do now is I want to pull up another PowerPoint right here and show you, um, so last year we put together a, a, a meeting presentation. You could have this on a tablet, a laptop, or by paper, however you want to do it, whatever works best. So when you're going to the meetings, it kind of gives you um, a little bit of a breakdown of what it is that needs to be covered. These, um, the structure of the meeting remains the same. That's what Katie went over with you just a few minutes ago. But this kind of takes you through it. So here's the definition of what NF is, and you can go through these points with, with um, the staffer or the member. Sometimes you've been in, in an office or an office is very familiar with it, and you won't have to go through all those um, different details. But it's here for you. Um, again, these are the details, uh, the complications that NF can present. And then this slide here, personal story, this is the time of the meeting where um, it's, it's one of the most important times of the meeting where you're going to explain your story, um, your NF connection to the staffer. And then here's where we talk about the military benefit. Make sure that they get that sheet. And then this part of the meeting, you'll be able to go, um, if you were from Alabama, you'd be able to say to that office that $34.72 million has gone back to the state. Um, you can, it'll show you the population um, of people um, in NF um, in that particular state. Um, we've got documents that, that'll give you that information as well. And then you, you can talk about how NF research is funding in your meeting. And then um, back to these, these are the same kinds of things that Katie talked to you about earlier. Is, I don't want to go through all of the details again. But I just want you to feel confident that all of these facts are you know, reiterated um, in this um, presentation for you so that it kind of helps you um, remember the details during the course of the meeting. And this is a good uh, slide that can show that the PDMRP and a research program has actually built funding um, and increased it at the National Institutes of Health. When we first started this program, there wasn't any funding at NIH um, for NF prior to 1996, or very little, um, because NF research wasn't competitive back then. But because of the CDMRP NF research program, good data has been found. And now you can see that NIH is actually funding research at a higher level um, than the CDMRP. So it's a good slide. It's a slide that Congress really likes to see you know, the programs are working together with one another. Um, and this slide is our success. It's the MEC inhibitor that now does have FDA um, approval, and we will have a success story um, for you on here that you can use or feel free to edit it and put one that you feel is appropriate in there. And again, it has our requests in there. And how you can sign on, we, we will um, have this information so you can say to the member or the staffer that you're meeting at um, with, to contact Senator Markey's office and sign on if that's, um, in fact, what they're going to do. Another thing is if they say to you that they can't sign on to the letter um, because maybe they sit on that committee, then um, you can ask them if they would put it on their priority or wish list. Those um, notifications still go to the Appropriation Committee and carry the same amount of weight um, 
as signing on. Um, obviously, we like it when they can sign on because then you know we can kind of track our success, you know, and how we're doing with how many congressional members we're getting um, to be supportive, and then thank them for their time. So what I'd like to try to do now is, um, if you have a question, if you could, um, do you see, um, can you put like, a, if you have a question you'd like me to unmute your phone, if you could just hit that little hand button um, next to your name there under attendees, then I would be glad to unmute your phone and see if we couldn't. Um, okay, so there's Emily. Let's see if we can get her. So, Emily, it looks like, from what I'm seeing, it looks like you are um, on your computer and not on your phone. So in order for me to be able to um, unmute you, if you could just dial in a new PIN number to, that's just sent to you. So if you could dial in on the phone, then I'll be glad to um, unmute it so that you can ask a question. going to flip open the questions to see if we have any other. I saw that, um, Larry, it looks like you're on. Oh, Emily says she is on her phone, but I can't seem to get you unmuted for some reason, Emily. Can you just type your question down there, Emily, and I'll read it out loud um, to Katie, if you would just type it. I was hoping we'd be able to chat, but I guess that's not going to work here. So I guess the best thing to do is, um, if you have a question right now, go ahead and um, type it in that little question box, and then I'll read it out loud here. If people are having problems too, um, I'm happy to answer questions if people just want to email me as well. Okay. So Emily did type in here. She said, no questions for the time being. Thanks for the great information. Yep. And since we aren't able to actually do that, I think the best thing to do is to go ahead and send us your questions. You can send them to that admin at nfnetwork.org and um, we can forward them to Katie and we can get them answered. Well, here's something for from Sherry. Oh, Sherry so sweet. Hi, Kim and Katie. Thank you for an informative presentation. Question, how many meetings does a person do in one day? Katie, you want well, to take that depends. one? Yeah, I was going to say it depends. It depends on the size of your delegation and how many people you have um, like in your group. Um, some large, like Texas, for example, usually bring several people and they have a huge delegation. So they're probably doing, I don't know, they could do as many as 10 meetings in a day. Or, you know, if they divide up into two groups, they could they could do more. Um, you know, some you'd know, be kept pretty busy, um, but it, it's, you know, we, we don't make you run all over Capitol Hill. You will have, we try to keep you in the, at least do maybe, maybe uh, some meetings in one building and then maybe go to another building. Um, so, uh, you, you'll, you'll do several. <laughs> and Sherry, you're Can from maybe, California. You'll be busy. <laughs> you have lots and, of meetings. And, and I was also going to say a lot of times, you know, you'll have meetings that are scheduled, but there's also a lot of members of a delegation that there isn't time to schedule or that, you know, we, we kind of prioritize, especially a state like California, we'll have to prioritize because there's just so many members. So there'll be also a lot of, uh, we make a folder for every member of the congressional delegation. So if you have a meeting scheduled with that office, you'll leave a folder, but then you can also, in your in the time between meetings, stop by offices and leave information at offices you don't have a scheduled meeting with. So you'll be kept busy. 
Okay, and here's one, a question from Sherry says, thank you. And then Larry um, from Ohio says, are we meeting only with our state congressional members of, or other members also? Um, it, it depends. So there are people that meet with other members as well. If you have a relationship with another, with a member from another state, then we're, um, you know, we're happy to try to get, get that office. Some uh, states, rep like with Northeast, they represent um, lots of different states. So we schedule with, you know, all of the Northeast states. But the state like California, we will just schedule California, meaning that it will be enough. Um, Ohio a, has a pretty big delegation, so it's likely that you would just be meeting with Ohio members. Um, but like I said, if there's there are other offices that, you, that you're interested in, or maybe a, you have family in another state, and there's a congressional delegation that you'd like to hit, just let Kim know that, and she'll let me know, and we can try to work that out. This is from Larry. He says, I have met with all of the representatives from my state. Um, Larry actually um, was very busy last year in, in Ohio. He um, got legislation passed and he presented testimony um, to encourage um, the state of Ohio to make a law that says that May is NF Awareness Month. Um, well, yeah, um, and that's, that's great. Um, we have to go back to um, all of the, the federal offices every year because we're um, every year starts a new appropriation cycle. So we will be asking for, um, we have to get funding every year. It doesn't just carry over year to year. So we have to go back um, in February and ask for fiscal year 2020. Um, so it's important to go back and hit all of the members and make that ask again. Cause it's, it, like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't carry over from year to year. Right. So we always have our work cut out for us. All right. Well, if anybody else has um, additional questions, please send them to us by email, um, and you'll be hearing from us, um, from the NF Network office, and from um, John Mann, our mentor coordinator. And we will get ready. Um, we'll be very busy here preparing for our trip when we go to Washington, D.C. in February. I want to thank everybody um, for attending tonight um, and for being interested in volunteering for this great work. Thank you and good night, everybody. Thank you, Katie. Good night. Good night.